So far in the course, our focus has been on creating static maps. Those are the maps which you can render as images that can be used in reports or creating static visualization. Now we're going to switch gears and learn about interactive mapping. Interactive maps are something that you will find on the internet where you go to a website and there's a map. You can zoom in, pan, click on markers, get some information, etc. So how can we create such maps using Python? This kind of maps are very useful because if you're building web apps, you need to display some geographic data. You need to use such libraries where people can interact with the data that we display. One of the very popular ways to do this is a JavaScript mapping library called Leaflet. This is widely used JavaScript library, which allows you to use some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create interactive maps easily. So for example, if you see a map like this, you can see I can zoom and pan this map. I can also click on this marker and it displays a pop-up. Many of you might've seen such maps. How does this map get created? Well, you need to use the leaflet mapping library and write some JavaScript. Now, creating maps like this using JavaScript is out of reach for many data scientists because we have to learn a whole different skill set. We have to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But what if you want to create an interactive map like this using the data that we have using Python? Well, that's what the library called Folium is designed for, which allows you to create leaflet maps using only Python. So let's just go to Folium. So this is the documentation for the Folium package, which says Python data leaflet maps. So you don't need to know any JavaScript. You don't need to know any CSS. You just say, I know how to use Python. I can read some data using Python and I can now display them on leaflet map. And this is what the package is designed for. Similar to matplotlib, matplotlib is foundational to doing any kind of static visualization in Python. If you're doing any kind of interactive mapping in Python, it's likely that the package you're using is built on Folium. So Folium is one of those foundational packages for doing any interactive visualization with Python. So we'll kind of focus and learn the concepts around Folium, and then we'll see some other packages, which are higher level packages, which allow you to create those maps much easily. But first we'll start with the basics of Folium. Let's connect to a backend and import the packages. The Folium package comes pre-installed in the Colab environment. So we can just import it. For this notebook, what we want to do is we want to pick two cities in the world and display markers on an interactive map showing those source and destinations. And then we're going to display the driving directions between those two locations. So we'll see how to create a map of driving directions between two of your chosen locations. We'll see how we can first display markers on the locations that will compute driving directions using a web service called open route service. Once we get the route, we'll see how to display the route on a map and then we'll save it as an HTML file that you can share with somebody or you can embed it in your blog or website and you will get this direction between two points. So, and all of this we'll do using just Python. For starting, we'll just get the coordinates of the two cities that we're interested in. We're going to uh, display the driving direction between San Francisco and New York. This is the latitude and longitude. We just create a tuple of the locations. So this is the latitude of San Francisco and longitude of San Francisco. Similarly, this is the lat long of New York. To create a map, we're going to use the folium package. We can just say folium.map. When we do this, we're going to get an interactive widget that gets displayed in a Jupyter environment. And this works on all Jupyter-based environments. So if you're doing this locally, it's in a Jupyter notebook or a Jupyter lab notebook. If we are in Colab, which is also a Jupyter environment, and it will display the map in that environment. By convention, you store this in a variable called m. So you just say, create this interactive map, save it in this variable m. And then if you want to see this, if I just do this, it is going to say, okay, I've created this interactive map. It's in this variable called m. Whenever you want to see the map, you just type the variable name. In a Jupyter environment, when you would say, just type the variable name, it's going to display the representation of the variable. So if you just say, show me the value of this variable, right now, if I just say M, it's going to show me a map, right? This was the map that we just created. So whenever you want to see the map, you can type the variable name. We can keep updating the variable. So you can say, I want to add a new layer to this map and the map will keep updating. So when you display this folio map, you can see it's a full screen map and it's kind of 
painful if you get a notebook from somebody who has a map, which is a like full width, and you start to scrolling through the notebook, you'll just kind of start zooming to the map. So what I like to do is always like to make our map with a certain width and height, so it doesn't take up the full space. The way to do this is using something called figure. Similar to our matplotlib mental model, we first create a figure and we add the map inside the figure. So Folium also provides a figure object. We can specify the width and height of the figure we want. And then we create our Folium map as usual and add it to the, the figure. Here we specify some more parameters when we're creating Folium.map. If we just create a map like this with Folium.map, we just get the world map zoomed out completely centered at 00, zero black log, which is something that you may or may not want. Typically when you create a map, you want it to be centered at a particular location. So here, when we create the map, we say, make it centered at this particular location. This is the zoom level that we want to start and this is the width and height that you want of the map. So when I run this now, you'll see that I get an interactive map and this time it's centered in the US and it is at the particular zoom level. So if you want to create a map, I would recommend using this method where you first create a figure and then create a folium root map with the chosen parameters and you'll be able to display the map here. And this kind of maps are much nicer if you create notebooks, it doesn't affect when you are scrolling past and you can interact with it if you want it. Let's display the, the locations on our map. So we want to display the travel interactions between San Francisco and New York. So first let's display some icons and that people can see where are the source and destinations. To display anything on the map, you have to use certain classes provided by the Folium library. There's a marker class where you can display a marker. Here's the, the documentation for the Folium marker. We can give a location along with many other parameters and it'll display a marker on a Folium map. We say folium.marker, this is the lat long of the location that we want to display. This is the pop-up, so when we hover over it, uh, it's going to display the, the name of the, what name to be displayed. So we say, please have a pop-up called San Francisco. Once we create the marker, we say add to M. So M is the map that we already created in the previous cell. So this is the map that we have created. And we say, we already have a map and please go and add this particular marker to M. Similarly, we create a marker at the location of the New York City and then the pop-up called with the text New York and then we add it to the map. Now, when I display the map, we have a map with two markers. And since we had specified pop-up, if I click here, it displays a pop-up with the text of the name of the city. So now I was able to create this map and add these two markers. Again, this is all Python code but we get a map that is created using JavaScript. Folium is a bridge which takes our Python and translates it into the appropriate JavaScript code and creates this map for us. We can customize this markers and pop up however we want. There are many, many different options available. One of the things that you may want to do is just change the icon. The default icon is good, but let's say we want to display a different icon for the markers. The Folium icon support two different libraries. There is a library called Font Awesome, which is, comes with so many different icons. You can see this has got thousands of icons that come in. You can use any of those icons. It's packaged with your Folium library. So you can just specify that I want my icon to look like a car, for example. And I can specify that I want it to be look like a car, or if you want to look like a phone, whatever. You can just use any of those markers that are available for you. So we change our map and say we create a marker with the text San Francisco. We want the pop-up to be the same, but now we specify an icon. We are using the font awesome icon, which is the prefix FA. So if you're using font awesome icon, it's a prefix FA, and then icon is crosshairs. So in this case, we're using the icon called crosshairs, and then we add that to the map. We also can specify the color. This one is a green and this one is a red. Let's run this. And you can see now I have different icon on my markers. So this is the crosshair symbol, and we say this is the source and this is the destination. Again, we can pick any icon. Let's just pick the car icon and see what it looks like. So I'm going to change this crosshairs to car. And you can see this displays a car icon. 
And same thing works with Bootstrap. If you want to pick up any of the Bootstrap icons, you can use the prefix as glyph icon and pick any of the icons provided by this library. So we have a basic map with some marker with uh, custom icons. Now it's the time to display the drive integration between them. Okay, so we have our map where we displayed the start and stop locations with a custom icon. Now let's display the driving directions. How do we get the driving directions? Well, we can use a web API to give us the turn by turn direction between any two locations. The service we're going to use is a service called Opened out service. This is a navigation service based on the OpenStreetMap data. It's a free service that is provides you an API where you can just send the lat long of the start and end location. And it's going to compute the direction using your chosen mode of travel. I really like the service. It's a free service run by University Heidelberg University. They provide this free of cost. If you go to the plans section, all of the plans are zero euros. So the standard plan is a free plan that they give where you can just use the service freely. You can just sign up for an API key and then you'll be able to access the service. There are some limits that apply just because it's an open service. And if you put an open service on the internet, people can abuse it. So they require that you adhere to this limits. These are plenty for most use cases where you can ask for 2000 different direction service a day, or you can compute some isochrome to find your isochrones a day. If you want to use this kind of system and if you run your own service, you can install it on your own computer. If I, if you say, I want to compute a lot of driving directions and I want to do a lot of analysis using this service, you can just install it on your own machine using Docker and then you get unlimited access. And I've also done this where I, for a project, I needed to create lots of different distances and direction computation. So I just installed it, loaded the data for that particular city, and then you can just use that service as much as you want. But for our purpose, we're just gonna use the service that are provided by them. For this, we're gonna create an account. So go and log into your Highgit account. And on the dashboard, you'll be able to see this key displayed at the top. I'm just gonna click copy and copy the API key. I'm going to paste my key here and then run the cell. So we have taken our API key and pasted our key here. Now we're going to compute the driving directions. You can see here we have the origin and the destination. We use the Python request module to send a request to this API endpoint. We are using the driving service. So they have different services. There is a driving service, walking service, and so on. We're going to get the driving directions from start and endpoint, and then we're gonna specify our API key. Let's run this, and if our request was successful, we'll get the status 200, and the server will return the driving directions. Let's see what did the server return. If I just show the data that the server returned, this is all the stuff that the server returned. We just asked, give me the direction between these two lat longs, and the server returned with this text. You can see this is just a regular text that came from server, it has got Bunch of things you can see there is driving direction. You can say head northeast on Market Street, turn left, turn right. Along with the each step, it has got the, the the actual geometry of the driving direction. So we've got the full route to drive between those two cities. The text is in a format called GeoJSON. So we need to extract the data that we need from this text. We can use the built-in JSON module that comes with Python to take this text and convert it to a GeoJSON object. This is called parsing. That means you take a text and extract different objects out of it. You can see this text looks very much like a Python dictionary. And that's what the parsing does. If you just say json.loads data, it takes the text that was written from the server, converts it into an object where you can extract different parts of the thing. So this object will be just a Python dictionary. And from then we can extract the different things. The main thing we want to extract is the summary. There's a summary field here which says what was the total distance for driving between San Francisco and New York. And we create a formatting, formatted text that driving direction is 4690. This will be used as a tooltip that is when you hover over this driving direction, it's going to display this text. Now we have some geodesic data. We say we have this geodesic data that has come from the server. Please display the data on the map we can just use the geodeson class. So we can say folium.geodeson. This is a data for the tooltip. We have the tooltip. I'll cover this boot factor in a bit, but we'll just say, please display this data and add it to the map and display our map now. And now you can see our map. 
displays this line. This is the line that was written to us from the server. This is the driving direction. If I just hover over it, it says driving direction. So there are two ways you can interact with the map. One is you can click on something, which will display the pop-up, and you can hover over something that is called the tooltip. So here I'm displaying a tooltip where I can just hover over this object and it displays the text that I have created. If I zoom in, you can see this one has got the actual direction and the actual highway geometry. So you can see there are it's a very precise geometry of the, the line, and it's a pretty long driving directions. If I zoom out, you'll see that the at this zoom level, I don't need to see all the precise geometry. So to render this very fast, what Folium does, it is simplifies this geometry automatically. And this is your scale factor, smooth factor. You can increase it to make it even more simplified. So if I just smooth factor two, you'll see this one will render fast, but it will be even more smooth. And as I zoom in, it'll get even more precise as I zoom in. So if I zoom in more, I'll get the precise geometry, but as I zoom out, it's gonna get more simplified. And if you have a lot of data, increasing this factor will help you render this at a higher zoom level much faster. So this is a pretty nice map. What if you want to display the driving direction to your office or you want to create a map showing direction between two places? You could now create this using just Python. You say, I want to embed this on my website or I want to share this with somebody, any of the folio maps can be just saved as an HTML file. So once you are done with the map and say, here's my final map, I can go and call m.save. So we create a file called directions.html. We create the path, this will go in our output folder, and we just say m.save. M is this map object that we've created, and we say m.save to the output path. And we're gonna do this. And once this is done, I can go to my output folder. You'll see this directions.html file. Let's just download it. This is a self-contained HTML file, which you can send to somebody, put it in a website, and it'll just display the whole directions. All the data you need to show this is already in the HTML file. Let's just see what this looks like. And you can see I've gotten a page, HTML page with the map that I created. And you can just share it with somebody and then they'll have the same map. The good thing about this, many of you will not be sending HTML files back and forth. The key here is we can now put this in our app. We could create a map like this interactively and create an app which can show this. So people can enter the source destination and then we'll display the driving direction like this interactively, which we'll learn later in the course. Okay, let's do an exercise. We now can explain. So for the exercise, uh, we want to create an interactive map like this uh, between two cities of your choice. So uh, you will have to change, make changes in the code given, Just change the coordinates and the name of your cities and uh, use your API key. Also, we want icons of car like this. So it is there here in the code. So try this, make required changes and run the script to see the map like this. Yeah, so here scroll a little bit below. So the idea is we have the section up at the top where you have to change the source and destination. So you'll find the lat long of your particular city that you want the direction from. Replace the lat long for that as origin, replace the destination lat long, replace your ORS API key. And when you run this, you should see a map and then customize it with different icons and different colors. Feel free to add more customization if you want to, but try to get the basic things working. 